So most programmers have a favorite IEE or text editor, so whether that's like Visual Studio, VS Code, PyCharm, Atom, Vim, and those are all good. But recently, I saw Microsoft Word. So I sat there in disbelief. So without further ado, the best IDE for programming is Microsoft Word. Microsoft Word has the most customizable syntax highlighting you can get. Because as a programmer myself and an employee of Microsoft, I know our main IDE that we designed was actually supposed to be Microsoft Paint. And to see people using Microsoft Word as an IDE instead of Microsoft Paint, it's just a little bit disrespectful. Now, why Microsoft Paint? Well, it combines the pure elegance of painting with the logical utility of programming. So let me give you a quick demonstration here of how Microsoft Paint is actually designed to be used. Now a big misconception when it comes to coding in Microsoft Paint is that you would use the text tool, this bad boy. You would never use that, obviously. No, no, that's not how it was designed to be used. Instead, we're actually gonna draw everything because that, you know, it's Microsoft Paint. You're painting, we're not writing here. We're not, we're not typing, it's not, Microsoft typing, it's Microsoft Paint. And as you can see, I did this Bob Ross painting, so I'm pretty much a natural at this. So the key here is, is to be incredibly precise with what you actually want to code, okay? See, this is improving my overall creativity, my mouse dexterity, and all honestly just, you know, code, coding ability, really. You know, it's a, you know, it could be a bit, a bit finicky, uh, but this is where this is where the iterative learning process sort of comes in, um, because as you can see, we obviously didn't write uh, this correctly, so that's why nothing is happening. So see, you know, if we're writing Python code, for example, this is uh, you're, we're not supposed to use a capital P, so we got to fix that, and then it's not catching this extra end parenthesis, and there's also a space. So, you know, this is just really improving my ultimately, you know, pr code productivity in the future you know it's a long-term investment sort of so honestly we're just gonna go back and we're gonna we're gonna try to fix this a little bit so we gotta draw the p a little bit smaller in relation to other words okay because we're you know we're just doing a simple simple uh python script right here oh see you know now we now we fix the space we in lowercase p but this thinks it's a dot and it's not catching the outside parenthesis, I don't think, right? So, God, that looks terrible. Oh, no, now there, it thinks there's too many spaces. All right, now we gotta fix that again. But in preparation for this happening, I actually did already do a, a new image. So I know th this bad boy is perfect coding style, really. Obviously, I'm sh I've been showing you like what not to do for a while. So this is what you're supposed to do. So when we plop this bad boy in here, then we can actually see what need what it sort of looks like and then now you see it our input code was print high and the output is high so just by drawing it it gives us readable python code now it is a bit finicky i will say that but i think it ultimately teaches you better programming style and you know Microsoft, this is how Microsoft Paint was designed to be used, really, as a, just a pure and regular IDE for physically drawing characters out. So Joma Tech, I know you really like coding in Microsoft Word, but that's not how it's designed to be used, and it's a little bit offensive to all the Microsoft engineers out there. So please, if you get some free time, try to program in Microsoft Paint. Let me know how it goes. If any other features you might want in there, let me know. Uh, but that's pretty much how and why it's designed that way. Now, how is this actually done? Basically, I have a program running in the background that watches for changes in a specific folder. So when I save a file in that folder, the image is grabbed, 
or I can run it directly to pick up that image. And then it uses Microsoft Azure's Optical Character Recognition API on the image to extract the text from it. So once the text is extracted, it creates a new Python file, appends that text in the file, and then executes that file. So as long as you are drawing legitimate Python code, it should still work. But as you saw, the OCR API is a little bit finicky. I hope you guys like that video. I know it was pretty dumb, but I thought it was a somewhat creative idea. If you're new to the channel, my name is Michael. I make college advice, tech, computer science content. If any of that sounds interesting to you, consider subscribing to the channel, liking this video for the YouTube algorithm, tune in to one of my past videos and my past self would thank you dearly and tune in to one of my future videos and my future self would also thank you dearly. That's all from me. Hopefully I see you in a future one. Bye-bye.